Good morning. Uh, today what I'm actually going to show you is how to hook up something like uh, one of these servo boards, okay? And uh, we'll probably in the next 10 minutes or so uh, show you how to hook it up, make it go, and then do something fun like uh, make it uh, run a small fountain pump or something along that line. Um, but I do want to caution you, if you're using if you're using something like an old Arduino, the original Arduino Uno, you can use basically any relay board that you see out there. If you're using uh, something uh, newer or uh, more contemporary like the Teensy, uh, which is going to be running a 3.3 volt supply, I'm sorry, a 3.3 volt output on the pins, you've got to be careful. I've actually just went through a bunch of experiments and I found, for example, that these guys, which you can uh, buy readily and affordably, and I, I'll probably be throwing them on my site as a discount, they don't work. Uh, at all with the 3.3 uh, volt devices and it only works on the older style 5 volt devices um, which is probably why they're blowing them out so cheap because they know that their days are numbered and eventually everybody's going to switch over and uh, the 5 volt devices will fade away but that being said uh, I also have these and these are this is a 2 relay board it's optically isolated and it does great on the 3 volt, 3.3 volt supply of signal, I'm sorry. So we have to hook it up. It's actually really simple. Um, first thing that we want to do is if you'll notice in this particular board, it has the VCC, which is going to be going to your logic supply. Okay. It has a ground, of course, and it has two input pins here. Okay. These are the two that are going to hook up to the digital I.O. of your processor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cable and I'm going to choose black for ground because I think that's pretty logical. In this particular case, I don't got a lot of choices. I'm going to go with white for supply. And we're going to go, we're going to hook this up to board number one. I can't quite see it with my eyes here. I think it's this one. So we're going to light up one relay, and I'm going to choose to put that, which was the gray wire, into pin 12. And I'm going to put the white wire into my supply line here. Remember, I'm on this board. The pins closest to the chip are your signal. The pins in the center here are your uh, supply, your voltage supply, and the pins on the outside are going to be ground. And I'm going to write a really simple program to test it. And in fact, so you don't have to just watch me type, I'm going to pause it and you're going to see a, a program magically appear. Okay, so I've written a really simple piece of code. Um, first thing I did was create a, uh, a constant called relay1, which I've assigned to pin 12. I then went down here and using pin mode, I made sure that that particular relay 1 or pin 12 is set to output. And what I've done here is I've done a very simple thing. Digital write, uh, I've set it high, and then wait half a second. I set it low, wait a second. So when it's high, it's going to charge the coil. It's going to uh, charge the coil below the relay. It's going to magnetize it, and it's going to slam the uh, contact down, and you'll be able to run your device. Notice there are three pins on each of these that's because by default it's already on one position so you can have it normally on or you can have it normally off depending on where you hook it up so it's either going to turn it on or off if you have a straight DC motor for example it'll always be on I believe in these two pins and then when it goes high it'll go low and if I hook it to these two pins it'll do the exact opposite it's either you're either always on or you're always off and you can switch it by jump driving the pins high or low. Let's see what happens. And we should get a nice pretty fast load here. Okay, it's working perfect. So now let me uh, let me hook up something and we'll move on from here. I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, I've added to the code and I've added an extra device. It's a little hard to see, but right here, kind of blends in here, there's a photoresistor. Oops, it's triggering. 
and I have hooked it up between pin A8 and ground. Okay, so I just inserted it into two empty pins there. And I called it uh, photo, and I've uh, made a constant called A8, or photo is equal to A8. Uh, down here, I also created another variable that we can hold the information gathered from that photoresistor. Um, down here, the only other thing I've added is I had to uh, set the direction of the pin uh, because I'm actually going to use the pull-up resistor. So I'm going to charge the pin. And so there'll be a pile of electrons on the pin and the photoresistor will be an escape route to ground. And when I ask the pin how high it is with an analog read, it's going to measure essentially how many uh, electrons are escaping through the photoresistor. If the resistor is high, then the value is high. If the resistor is low, the value goes low because there's a lot of electrons that can escape. Uh, so down here in the loop, I go ahead and do it. I have photo value uh, is analog read photo. So I'm going to gather the data from that pin and I'm going to display it on the serial window. Oh, I created this serial window and it's going to wait for me to open up the window before it actually runs. And then I've set a condition. If this value photo val is greater than 200, well, then we're going to turn on and off our relay. So let's load it up. And it's not going to do much until I open the serial window. And now we can see our data. Oh my gosh, I should put a delay in there. You know what? Hold on a second. Let me put a delay in there so I don't get this seizing effect here. Uh, hold on. Okay, so I've added a uh, delay right here in the code. So that way we get a nice controllable flow of data to my serial port without it actually ever locking up. And if I start to cover the photoresistor, the value is going to go up and when it exceeds 200, it trips the relay. Okay, so that works. Let's add a teeny bit more to it and I'll be back in just a second. All right, now I've just added a little bit of fun to the code, actually. Um, I'll show you what it does first. If you watch the serial window, you can see the, the straight line here is going to be the trip point. That's when it hits 200. And this is my scalar that actually measures the amount of light. So if I take and put my hand here and start bringing it down, blocking out the light, okay, you can watch and see the value go down, and then it trips. All right, how did I do it? Uh, real simple here. Um, the first thing that I did, I should probably give you a nice space here so you can see that. Um, after it collects the data, I simply take and print enough stars to equate the data. Initially I did it, and of course it went off the scale because there's gonna be like 200 blank spaces, so I take and divide it by five. So it maximum value when it trips, it's gonna be 200 divided by five. It puts in that many stars, okay? Then it puts in a dead space with a new line. Then it essentially, to make this line here, I know my trip point is 200. That would be a nice thing to declare as a variable up there, which I didn't do yet. And it's going to put in 200 blank spaces, okay? Divided by five. And then it's gonna type in the, the rod character and then a blank space. So what you see happening is a nice scalar with a trigger, okay? So let me actually add a couple more things and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, well now I'm actually gonna make it do something. I'm gonna add um, this little uh, submersible electric pump, okay? And to do that, I actually have this one already fitted with uh, some standard sort of Arduino type housings. I'm gonna stick two wires. Actually, what I need to do is have one of these go to ground because I need to complete a circuit, okay? So I'm gonna set that into ground, just like that. Then I need to give it power. Well, to do that, I'm probably best off to, I'm gonna just plug it in over here. Let's actually connect the relay on the center pin. I'm going to take this 
and insert it into here. Okay. And I'm going to plug this end into power. So now I'm going to give it 5 volts. Now one of the questions that I have, and I forget, is remember I said one of these is always on until it's switched. Okay. So let's figure out which one's normally on. Okay. So you can see this one's normally on, which means that this one is going to be the triggered one. So I'm going to insert this into here. And I happen to know that this is a little messy on my desk, so I'm actually going to take this, instead of having it going on for half a second, I'm actually going to make it go on for only uh, 0.2 seconds. Okay? So I now have a path, right? I've got the one end of the motor hooked to ground. The other end, which should be getting a positive supply, comes over here to my relay. And then center pin of the relay is hooked up to my positive supply. So in theory, when the relay trips, it's going to allow the electrons to flow through there, over to here, down to the motor, and into ground. And it should work. In fact, it should just work. Let's just uh, try it. Let's get our, so we can see our scale here. See if we can get it so you can see everything. All right. And, oh, let me load it up again. One moment. Oh, it's how I changed it. That's right. I have to reload it. Okay. Oh, look at that. Boy, did I make a fool of myself. Hold on a second. Well, how about that? I had a process of reset. And I didn't notice it. But now, it should work. Although interestingly, my scalar thing has stopped, and I'll have to look at that. But you got the basic idea. It's triggering at 200, and then it runs. Okay, so hopefully that was informative, and I will see you again soon.